Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Yo ho, folks! You know what it is, Tuesday. Hello, we had a Tuesdays come out on Super Tuesday. Yeah, that was fun. I got so many Super Tuesday tweets. Yeah. Even Sarah came home and was like, "It's Super Tuesday." Oh, that's fun. That was fun. Yeah. It, 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 is that always been there? I don't remember being a kid and hearing about Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday? Oh yeah, it's been around for a long time. Oh yeah. weird. Super Tuesday started, I think, in oh, Tuesdays with facts. Get ready. Started in 1980. Oh, and that's when uh, a bunch of uh, something like that. I think it was eighty. Like a bunch of states were like, "We're all going to do our uh, primaries on this day." Uh-huh. And now it's grown because it's whatever ten states or whatever the fuck. I know. And you didn't? Did you vote? I voted. Yeah, I had a fucking uh, what do you call it? Uh, absentee. Ah, you get one of those fucking things. But you're here. I, I got a Massachusetts business. Ah, you yeah. Flip New it. York didn't hasn't voted yet. I don't know when New York's primary is. So how did you vote? You went to Beantown? No, you get an absentee. What is that? You get an I'm out of town. Well, you love tea. Yeah, I do. I'm drinking one right now. Steep. You get a nice fucking <laughs> send it over. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta I gotta learn how to vote. That's fun. It's exciting. You feel like you're part of something, but you're really not. It's fun. Yeah, the sticker. People love a sticker. Yeah, nobody cares. Nah, it's all still. We're all gonna die one day. That's true. We should really spend a lot of time thinking about it. Yeah? What, think about dying? Yeah. No, you got to live. Well, that's part of living. You think about death, not in a sad way, just in an accepting way of like, yeah, it will happen. Because otherwise, you know, you're living in denial. I guess. I I think think you got something there, Fatty, because the whole thing is the ending is what makes it good. Like, I was just in Hawaii, and my the guy I was with, this guy Andrew Youngblood, funny comic from Houston, he's like... I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna move here, and I'm like, but then it's not Hawaii. Now you're just living in this place. You can't just move here. You can, it's like eating cake every day. The 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 beauty of Hawaii is that it's gonna end. So you gotta it, soak it in, fatty. I suppose, but I mean, New York is great. We live here. True, but we work here. We got our business. We got our stand ups. We got our clubs. Our cellars. Our pot. Our lunch stuff. Anal. Yeah. I guess. But he's on vacation. I'm saying this ain't vacation. No, this, this ain't is vacation. Fun, fun loving stuff, but uh, I like blowing you, but I'm just saying it's this is work. I think, but Hawaii, if you went there, it might be nice. All the time. Eventually, I guess you get used to anywhere. Right. No matter where you are. That's why I won't get married. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think he's living in a pipe dream. Mm, well, he's probably not going to move there. Probably right? not, but he, he's extended his stay. He's supposed to leave Sunday. He's like, I'm staying on Monday. And then I just talked to him today. He's like, I'm still here. But I do think that, too, sometimes. because I, We talk about this a lot on the podcast, and I, I say that a lot. Evidently, people have told me. But I, every time I go to the beach or L.A. and I'm hiking, I'm like, maybe I should just live here. I'm sure. happiest when I'm in the ocean. Right. That's my peak happiness. So I'm like, maybe I should move to the ocean. Mm. And we'll hit him. Into the ocean. <laughs> All um, in one. So being in the ocean, like, I, I get what he means if he's like, I feel happier here, I should move here. But of course, problems are going to arise yeah, there. Yep, but yep. my point about death is it takes the teeth out a little bit because you have all this fear. And I was reading this great book called The Antidote, mm. different from Anecdote, uh-huh. um, about how everyone denies it. And it's actually difficult for human beings to think actually think about death for sure. more than about five seconds whoa you naturally come off of it is that right yeah try it sometime to think about not just like ah we're gonna die but like actually in-depthly put yourself of like we are going to cease to exist for eternity yeah baby no coming back yeah no even right now it puts a weird feeling in my stomach and i have to move my face out of it really i think about all that so much i might be i think i'm numb 
But not, not I don't mean like, ah, we're going to get cancer, we're going to die, we're going to live. Uh-huh. I mean like actually thinking about the emptiness of nothingness permanently, forever, eternity, no thoughts, right. you're, you're gone. And all the people walking on the sidewalk who'd never heard of you in a hundred years, never thought of you, not even a crumb on the table of anal. Earth, the, the, the fucking galaxy yes. and life is not even going to blink an asshole. No. Just nothing, affected nothing, and... Think about actually being thoughtless. Because a lot of times you think about death, you think about like, oh, it'll be black, it'll be weird. Right. But like, be no, no, it's not even that. No thoughts. Nothing. Yeah, no thoughts. You're you're nothing. Nothingness. Yeah, I, it's kind of relieving. It's better than the alternative of living forever. You don't want the immortal. But um, if you sat and thought about it, it would make everything seem less dramatic. Like, yeah. you know, like, my flight's delayed. Oh, if you sit and really think. Right. There was, like, an old Buddhist thing. If you get in a fight with a friend or a loved one, to imagine that person 3,000 years from now. Ooh. Just their complete dust long gone. You're like, ah, what am I mad about? Right. Yeah, these people who don't talk to their uncle. I hate my uncle. He fucked me. I'm gay. All this. And then you're like, ah, it's all going to be nothing. You're going to be dust. My uncle are all sexy fine with mustaches. So I feel like if they fingered me when I was a kid, it would have been kind of neat. Sure. I mean, they're heroes. Yeah. Never forget. Never forget that diddle. Um, they deal with poles and hoses. All right. But hold on. Back to death. Yes. I've noticed if I say, ah, we're all going to die one day, the crowd gets kind of like, ah, jeez. No, they get bummed. That's they what I bummed. mean. They're yeah. denying. I've had so many jokes about death, and the crowd's like, ugh. Yeah, and you're it, like, it's going to happen. Because people, like, really, like, we talk about it and think about it a lot, but, like, for a moment here, we make jokes about it, but people really get serious about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you ever look at an old photo from the 20s, you go, they're all dead. How about that? Everyone in this photo with the streetcar and the hot chick with the kneecaps is gone. Yeah, it's like Louis' bit. Like, most people ever are yeah, dead. Yeah, like, the yeah. majority of people are dead. Oh, yeah. Zillions and zillions. Although there's so many people on Earth now, that number might be I don't less. know. There's, no, there's no, no contest. No, but the population growth is so insane. Uh-huh. Where I'm like, like, I think there's, I don't know, 2 billion people on Earth. Yeah. 50 years ago, there was, like, 100,000 oh, people on Earth. Oh, I see. Yeah, we've really quadrupled. So for, like, whatever, a 1,000 years, there was, like, 80 people dying a year. Sure. Now we got 9 billion fags right here on Earth. Yeah, that's a lot of AIDS. <laughs> but, yeah. I shouldn't have said fags. No, I'm that sorry. I shouldn't have said AIDS. Uh, I tried to double down on AIDS your offensiveness. Is fine, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I gotta I gotta work on it. I use the fag very liberally, and it's I gotta a, stop. It's a good time. Plus, you smoke. But you know, I'm not saying it, of course, of like that gay guy. It's no, just fun to, no, it's that idiot. I do feel bad. I do have a conscience where I'm like, ah, jeez. But I, it's such a fun, I think funny word. Gays giggling in a treehouse somewhere with a butt plug in. Well, over that. <laughs> certainly, we have like our 38 gay people that love the show yes, and aren't offended by it. We love you, homos. <laughs> We do. We actually love you. I mean, I call you a honky, a bad tooth, a herpy. I don't. I don't dislike you. Bad tooth. That's uh, hurtful. Ah. Uh, uh, but is, huh? is that worse than fag? I guess it is because it's specific. Yeah. I mean, I can't. Uh, fag at least has a parade. There's no <laughs> teeth parade. You know. I might start it. Yes. That's pretty fun. Start it up. I think attendance would be low. Yeah. No one wants to watch a bunch of snaggles walking around. You get some rednecks and a hockey guy, maybe. Yeah, hockey's fun. They got a a missing molar. But theirs is like, it was like punched out of their head. Sure. Mine's just bad genes. Maybe some crackheads, meth heads. Yeah, those all caused it. It's such a bummer. I've always thought this, that like, I always get jealous. Like, my sister had nice teeth, and I'm like, what is going on here? You just have regular teeth, no braces. I had braces and bad teeth at the same time. Interesting. Yeah, my mom, perfect teeth, never brace. Yeah. Weird. Some people just lucky. Some folks are lucky and some ain't. Mm hmm. That's from uh, Reservoir Dogs. But I think that's what the uh, the religion is. Somebody made up religion because they go, ah, death is a little tough load to swallow. I'm going to make up a whole heaven with my aunt and we're singing and it's on a cloud and sure. I'm fucking uh, a lady, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, I understand religion when I, like, I talk about this. Uh, the other day with my wife and sister-in-law, like I had norovirus one time for like 18 hours, puking shit. It was insane. I was like, oh, if someone had this in 1482, of course they're like, the devil got him. Fucking Satan. Because I was like, 
Yeah, exactly. Like, watery, wild shit firing out of my ass at the same time that I was puking. He's possessed. It's a demon in him. Yeah, and I'm crying. Of course they're throwing holy water at him and fucking hanging him in the streets. Sure. They're like, this is crazy. Get rid of him. Get him quarantined his fucking ass. I think that now. I was like, I think the fucking spirits got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they think when you puke, you're like, you're getting rid of the spirits and all that. That's what a sneeze was. That's why they go, God bless ye, or whatever. Right. That's why they swallow cum. Yes. You spit it out, you're going to look like Satan's cousin. Swallow, folks. It's good for you. Oh, isn't that nice? A nice swallow. Oh. Nothing better than a nice, warm blowjob, and then she comes up and just with a nice, empty mouth. It's wild. I'm like, you didn't have to do that, but we all appreciate it. Yeah. I had a girlfriend previously that would hock it in the uh, the trash afterwards, yeah. and it was a bummer because you're like, well, now we just have like a weird spittily load in the garbage. Yeah, but I mean, I you can't uh, expect them to swallow. I feel I get the load in the, in the trash. I don't expect, but I'm like, I would just say, keep it in that mouth an extra four seconds, spit it right in the toilet, and flush it. Okay. I'll give you that. Because now you got weird load just fermenting in the uh, along with you know a banana peel and uh, a fish bone and a shoe. <laughs> I go. I watch a lot of cartoons. Throw a shoe in the trash. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's like when people hock a loogie. I saw a guy hock a loogie in a garbage and it had no lining. And I'm like, come on, oh, man. Yeah. That's just going to sit on the plastic in the hot sun for six months. Well, I'm a loogie hawker with the reflux and whatnot, and I feel bad. But I was just reading about the corona business, and they said that's. One of the things, you can't be spitting around everywhere. Oh, there's a, I see spittle all day long. I yep. see those, those gooey lugs on the sidewalk. Um, I had a friend, a tough guy, dude, Bruce, tough dude. He would beat you up kind of guy. And he was he got a BJ. The ladies liked him. He got a BJ, and she tried to kiss him, and he goes, oh, you got to brush your teeth. And I remember being like, dude, she blew you, and it's your stuff. You gonna yeah. make I would I would lick her lips after I don't give a shit. Yeah, that's hot. Get right in there. Yeah. Mm. But he he thought it was like a cool thing, like tough guy. Hey, I ain't making out with my own semen. Well, that's the nice thing. If you're like if you're into cum, like you kind of want to suck a, a dick. Sure. That's the closest you can get without being like I'm gay. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. You've had jizz in you. A little yeah. Bit. You can uh. get a little a little jizzy makeout. Yes. Or you could eat that cream pie. You ever do that? Nah, never did it. That's too much, isn't it? Too much. Uh, the the uh, the spittle when she sits above and spits it in another girl. Yeah. Is that a, what is that? A snowball? That's a snowball. Ah, snowball cream pie. And then there's the uh, what is it called? Hammer the, fisting. No, when you punch her in the oh the strawberry shortcake. What's that one? That's you punch her in the nose, and then she's got the jizz and the blood. Oh right, right, right. A little violent. That seems unpleasant to you. Yeah. Who's actually doing that? Huh? Somebody. I guess. Somebody's doing everything out there. Call in if you've done it. But uh, hopefully we won't die, you know. I, 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 it scares the hell out of me. But when I actually sit and think about it, I'm like, that's not so bad. So you die. It's just like before you were yeah. born. And you, I look at it as a positive, like, oh, in 60 years, I won't have to do push-ups. I won't have to brush my teeth. I won't have to wipe my ass. Well, that's when I get there when I'm having real anxiety and stress. I'm like, being dead, was, it's not so bad. No, you stop no. worrying about all this shit. Yeah, that's what suicide is. You go, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I've had enough. It's a wrap. Yeah, I got somebody reported me to Twitter by the way because I tweeted out a suicide joke. Mm. I said, if I ever kill myself, I'm going to put the note on uh, Patreon. Oh, that's great. That's pretty good. And then somebody reported it to Twitter, <laughs> so Twitter sent me an email. But it was what? funny because they were like, somebody was concerned about you. But if you're concerned about me, reach out to me. Don't reach out to Twitter. Ah, uh, it's annoying. You know what I mean? They email me and be like, hey, I hope you're doing okay. Yeah. A couple people reached out, which I appreciate the concern, but um, I, I'm fine. That's just a tattletale. That's not helping. I, I posted a thing on Instagram about suicide, and they, they deleted it. Yeah, we're fine. We'll what, be all what, right. What do they think? The people are going to go see that and go, maybe I should do that. Like, well, what's I, the, the reasoning there? I think they're worried that we're going to kill ourselves. Like, they're like, we're worried about this guy. Check well, him out. deleting my shit is only going to make me want to suicide quicker. That's a good point. I have a point. Well, well, oh wow! Thanks. <laughs> I got to tell you about Hawaii. Hit me with Hawaii. Hawaii. First Hawaii. off, Hawaii. Celebrity sighting in my neighborhood. Oh, let me guess. Give me three guesses. All right, get, hit me with three. All right, I know a couple people that live down here, or I know of some people that live down here. No hint, no clue. You're going balls to the wall, rando here. Uh, give me, give me three randos and then a hint. Okay. And no, then, no. I'll give you two randos and a hint, then you get one more. Okay, okay. All right. All right. I'm going to say... Here we go. All right. Big um, Daddy. Think about the hood, the city, the anal, the Jews, mazel. Well, 
I'm going to do the thing where I say a guess without guessing. Okay. It's not, I know it's not <laughs> Matthew Broderick, because that would just be like a whatever. Yeah, he lives two blocks him. away. Yeah, that's just a regular. See how I did that? I did that a nice guess good. without guessing. Well done. Okay, I'm going to say Sissy Spacek. Ooh, no, but good alliteration. Well, what the hell? I threw it out there. I like it. Coal miner's cunt. Okay. How about Parker... Posey? Lewis can't lose. No, no, no. That's All right. a big deuce. Give me the hint. Give me the hint. Yeah, I know she went two uh, interesting looking ladies. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I was thinking Parker Posey because she seems villagey. Yeah. But then I came up, Sissy Spacek popped in in place of Parker interesting Posey. Interesting pop in. But then I thought, this is my thought process. I wanted to say Parker Posey. I wanted that to be my first guess. Uh -huh. But Sissy Spacek came in instead of Parker Posey. Okay. So then I thought, I better say Sissy Spacek, because what if it is Sissy Spacek? Uh -huh. And then I'm the guy that was like, I was going to say yeah, that. Yeah, you were going to say that. Everyone hates that guy, yeah. and then no one ever believes that no guy. No one believes that guy. And You're a rapist. There's no other worse feeling than not being believed. Right. Kind of that Chappelle joke is so great about Please Clinton. Please believe. That, wait, what was that one? That was about uh, you. You hit that bitch. He's like, no, I didn't. I didn't. Please believe me. Yeah, the, the, is that the Clinton joke? I don't think so. The Clinton one was like, he's like, you could, you know, Clinton fucked her by the way he denied it when because he, he was like, um, he came out and he's like, I didn't. He looked like he just got laid. He's like, oh, I did yeah. not have sexual relations with that woman. And he sniffs his finger. He's like, you ever get accused of fucking someone that you didn't fuck? You're like, I never touched that bitch! Fuck oh, you, yeah. motherfucker! I mean, that is the same joke. That might be the, might same, be the same That joke. might be the same joke. Yeah, yeah. Anywho, all right. So anyways, that's why I said Sissy Spacek. So give me a hint and I'll throw out a favorite. All favor. right. I'll say, I'll give you an occupation. Writer. Writer? Author. Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, there's only like two that we all know. All right, it's a pretty good hint. I'm giving you a real nugget here. All right, boy. Throw I mean, a nug at you. Denver nug. I mean, how many writers do you know? That's the thing. There's not that many. I've got to go with Stephen I King. Dr. Seuss and uh, Hitler. Um, no. James Joyce? No, he's, uh, he's kaput. Hemingway? He's done as well. I'm suicide. Uh, boy, Hunter S. Thompson? Also uh, suicide. Mixed. <laughs> he's a suicide guy, too. All right. Is he suicide? Thompson, yeah. What'd he do? Sh shot himself. Ooh, good for him. Right in the face. Good way to go. You know, a good writer move. Uh, I'm out of writers. All right, Gladwell. Oh, yeah. did you talk to him? Talking I, to strangers. Oh shit! It's his I most recent said book. That. Damn it, that's good. No, he walked by and I saw him a mile away, and I got a confession to make that I'll tell you after that I've been holding from you. Oh jeez. Yeah. Uh, he walked by. I saw him, and he was at the light. I was at the light on the opposite corner, caddy corner, and he walked by, and I went, you know, we we deal with some some fan addicts, so I didn't want to be too scary, but I go. Big fan, and he goes, eh, ah, and he kept walking. Oh, That wow. was it. So I didn't press it. I would have said, uh, I read your most recent book. What's the name of it again? And then he'd say, talking to strangers, and I'd say, nice to meet you. Ah. That would have been a fun little. That's big. And then he would have been like, you're the 11th person that said that today, you yeah. fucking idiot. You're not an outlier. Wow. I don't know if I'd recognize Malcolm Gladwell if he walked in here and spread his ass cheeks for what me. What are you kidding? He's a half black uh, mixed race fusion swirl. He's got a little gay fro and a caramel skin. Mm. He's yeah, a Definitely pretty wouldn't recognize him. Opposing fig or opposing N. <laughs> but yeah, half N. But uh, good egg, good writer. Now, my confession is, this is so embarrassing. Oh, boy. So I got a bunch of free shit, free merch from a clothing company. All right. And I wear it during the day because it's so embarrassing, but it looks cool, but I can't pull it off, so I just wear it around non-comics because they'll shit on me. What is it, FUBU? What are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a bunch of Herschel shit. Herschel? What? Herschel. It's a, it's a cool clothing brand, like a hip. Like Herschel Walker. Yeah, yeah. Hip. Hip, hip trends. Hip threads. One of them's a trench coat. I walk around town with it on. I look like a detective. You can't have a trench coat. I can't have a trench coat, but I love it. Does it have a belt? No belt. It's the, it's the executive. A, a beltless trench coat. Yes. Yeah. It's the executive. Wow. I walk around town in the village with sunglasses and a trench coat on. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like McQueen. Do you ever like uh, have it just over your shoulders without the arms in the thing? Ooh, that's I, a, I can't do that. That's a neat look. And oh, then you, can, you sprinkle it off like Doc Holliday. Oh, that's hip. The shrug off. That used to make me a little turned on. In Tombstone, yeah. when he comes in the fight and he does a shoulder shrug. That is hip. It was really something. That's lunch. But yeah, I, I walk around this trench. I get I get glimpses of me in the in the mirrored windows, and I'm like, look at this guy. I feel mm. like a writer. I feel like uh, Steve McQueef. 
That's tricky. It's tricky getting the new look going. I can't do it. It's not me. I know it's not me, but I get to live throughout. I get to live as a cool cat for 10 minutes. That's kind of fun. Good I go to you. the laundry. I come back with a trench coat on. Enjoy yourself. Want me to show you a photo of me in it? Sure. I'll all take right. A photo. All right. All right. Look at this. It's embarrassing. Let's put it on the Patreon. Oh, this is my suicide note. This might get a couple of extra Patreons. Here, I was hanging out with Salacuse. Wait. Look at that. That's me in the, um, the, in the laundromat. Oh, that's too much. Isn't that too much? Yeah, you look a little... I look pretentious uh, and cunty. A little bit. I mean, it's... It's a cool coat. It's not you. No, but that's the fun part. But it could be you. Part. It could be a I new... I can't, you, I can't. I pi- As I walk down the street, I picture, you know, some guy soda going, what the fuck is that? You know? It looks like you should be like a Bill Cunningham blog. Oh, yeah, He's that yeah. street guy. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, but well, I you should have like somebody. beetle boots on with that. Right, right. Yeah, it's a Ringo dick mm. but all right i feel way better i've been doing it for weeks yeah have fun out there i'm having fun it's, yeah, it's well, blackface doing well. you know it's fun well oh give oh, me some hawaii oh hawaii. yeah all right i got a lot of weird hawaii nuggets now tell me what you think about this there fat man because uh <laughs> this is kooky oh don't forget we have ads at some point oh good call we better do a better job this week yeah that was my fault i threw in a couple anti-semitic jokes we got into some trouble uh, ten and a half hour flight to Hawaii, Honolulu to be exact. Mm, um, I've done that one. It's not pleasant. Not the best island of Hawaii. No. No, you got Maui and the other one, and they're way better. Hawaii just—it's like a—it's like Santa Monica. It's just I a thought, bunch of fucking Prada stores and and a uh, Trader Joe's. I thought that's Oahu. Honolulu's Oahu, right? Is that Oahu? I think so. Honolulu's the cap. Yeah, All I right. think Honolulu's in Oahu. You got to go to the North Shore. That's like with a the cool ah, surf. That's, that's what. What do you call that? The Oahu's uh, who? There's uh, Haleiwa and the the big fish. You were in the city. In the city. Yeah. Just highway houses. You know, Red Lobster. Nothing yeah. Crazy. We drove through there and it was kind of like yeah. Yeah, yeah. You go to Maui, it's fucking cliffs and you know mountains and palm trees and anal. Right. Uh, all right, so first fun fact, Hawaii, Hawaiian Airlines, out of JFK, got to get there a little early. It feels, you know, I just had that passport rape, and it feels like you need a passport, doesn't it? Yes, it feels like it should be, inter- I mean, it should be international. It should be. It's 10 hours, it's uh, an island, but it isn't, it isn't, and it's America. They're their own race, I yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah, we're Howleys, yeah. they call us, and they're fucking scary, mook, Asian-y looking. I think the story of Hawaii is somehow pretty shady. Oh, yeah. We went in there and we just nabbed really it. really raped and pillaged. Sure. That's um, our thing, though. What is a pillage? I have no idea. I don't know what plunder or pillage is. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a drug overdose. I was thinking the same thing. You pillaged. Give me the pillage. Right. We got you 38 Oxycontins. <laughs> right. So I've sit. First of all, no Wi-Fi. In Hawaii? In uh, the, Hawaii? On the, on the flight. Oh, Isn't that yucky. crazy? That's absurd. And I didn't know going in, so I was like, I'll get some work done. I'll send out some tweets. I'll put up a post. I'll do that. And then like... I asked the lady, because I couldn't get on. I couldn't find I was like, can I get the Wi-Fi? She goes, oh, there's no Wi-Fi on Hawaiian Air. Ooh. And I was like, what? It was like somebody said there's no bathroom. It was insane. No, that's crazy. You're not an offline for 10 hours kind of guy. No, I want to te- I'm, I'm just picturing you texting me or Shelbo or the girl or the mom or my aunt. It really is a sickness. I put my phone in the other room. It's I'm like, sickness. somebody's texted of me. Of course. I got to get that text. Could be Jerry. Ah. Exactly. Oh, the camera's off. Ah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hello. Fuck tits. I just noticed it just now. Why did you do that? I don't know. Now it's back. Oh, God. Sorry, everybody. How long? How long? Did, only a second, because I look over there every 10 seconds. Good, good. What's that mean? Usually I turn it back on, it says, like, card full or something, but it's no, not saying anything. Ah, uh, it's back on. Well, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Maybe it'll blink again or Please, something. Please, keep an eye on it. Good, good catch. Well, we're back. All right, boy, that was a good save there. All right, so there's no Wi-Fi. All right, so there's no Wi-Fi. Now, I'm on this flight. The woman next to me, she was uh, speaking Spanish the whole time to her friend above her. Gross. And she, he goes, well, don't don't talk to me. You should be studying. And she was like, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Because she would go in and out of uh, Espanole, and she had a big stack of papers with printed shit on it, and she read them for 10 hours. Out loud? No, no, just to herself. She would flip and highlight and underline, and I was like, at some point she's going to take it. I mean, this guy is not looking at her. We got TVs here. 
She studied for 10 hours. That's insane. I've she, never studied for 10 hours cum- accumulative my right, entire life. Right, And she would take a nap or, and eat, but I mean, never looked at her phone, never looked at the TV, nothing. Wow. I was like, man, you think we're hardworking? You think we're disciplined? I don't. That, that, well, you know, you feel good. You do something like, oh, I did a book report or I, I wrote a bit or whatever. 10 hours of straight. Wow. Unbelievable. I, cu- I would wake up and check, and she's still going. I couldn't believe it. Inspiring. Inspiring. Yes. He did not need inspiration. Uh, Tolstoy. Aha. Uh-huh. So, yeah. <laughs> War, what is it good for? <laughs> so, uh, I watched every episode of Succession. Oh, wow. Did you like it? I liked it. Wow. I, I know it's you amazing. Hate any drama. I'm not, I like Brian Cox, and the, the uh, show's great. great. It's Shakespearean. It's like King Lear. Mm. King Queer. I never cared for Shakespeare. Oh, really? Nah. Pretty good. Don't get it. All right. It's got good reviews. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we get to Hawaii. Uh, I had the best moment. You know, you land in Hawaii, it's a five hour difference. You know, it's that's how far it is from L.A. Right, L.A. is three, which you're like, well, three hours. That's a, that's a chunk, but five hours is a chunk. When it's seven a.m. over there, it's noon. No, yeah, is that noon? That's five hours. No, pretty sure. Yeah, you might be right. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't it weird that though how close Hawaii is to L.A. Really? Yeah. For us, that's like flying to Omaha. Yeah. Like, New York to Omaha is L.A. to Hawaii. It's true. I yeah. feel like I'd be going to Hawaii every 10 days. Yeah, why not? L.A.'s, it is kind of magical. I mean, you drive around, you're like, it's hilly, and there's greenery and lush. Yeah. And gays. Rains. Yeah, so, uh, mudslide. So, uh, yeah, watched all of Succession, loved it. Then I did that thing where you get in Hawaii, and you got some time left. You know, like, it's like 5 at night, or 5 in the afternoon. And I just did that thing where you drop the bag off, and you just want to walk around. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It, and Hawaiian air, the air there, not the plane. Hawaiian air, literal air, is different. It's not hot. It's not cold. It's not dry. It's not wet. It's a magical place. For sure. I love it. Because it's, it's also like way further south than you realize. Oh, yeah. It's like way further south than Florida. Right, right. It's way down in the middle of the Pacific. You're halfway to Japan or more. Or yes. It's it's very fresh. You get that salty ocean air. Fresh. There's the palm trees. It yes. rains every day. So there's like some kind of mist. Yes, there's a mist. Mystify. Gorillas. So we, I walk around and there's families and people and hot chicks and bikinis. And I just you, know, you dip your toe in the water and uh, the water's not hot. It's not cold. It's just right. And it's like, I feel like fucking Goldilocks here. And I uh, just had a beer on the beach. And it, it's it's a special thing. You get why people like it. But wait, what were you there for like a couple days? Yeah, yeah. I really fucked myself. I was a four, it was 11 hour flight basically twice so that's 22 hours i was there for three days Ooh, that's tough that was a big mistake i, I think i did the same thing when i went but once you're there you're there exactly, exactly. you know you, you let go of the flight and enjoy it yeah so i walked around just beautiful and i i did a thing where i, I was getting hit up like hey are you here you know because once you're there all the other comics are like i need you like there's no one here I know, so you really bond with people you barely know. Sure, you want to get that hang going. Yes, and I said, I'm not hanging. I'm going to bed because I want to be fresh tomorrow. I want to get up early. I want to hit the beach. I want to have a breakfast. I want to have a coffee. I want to have a sex. And uh, woke up, hit the gym at like 8 a.m., and I'm all off time-wise. Went and got some Loco Moco. Ooh. That's their big uh, delicacy. I remember hearing about loco. It's basically like a beef stew over rice with a thing of t- potato salad in the middle. That sounds incredible. Amazing! You throw some hot sauce on there, you're diarrheaing all day, and it was worth it. Uh, I had a loco moco. Just laid out. I like to do the, I'll meet up with you at night. I want the day. Yes. I laid out all day, got a tan, had a couple of Mai Tais on the beach, talked to some cougar for like an hour. It was really fun. And uh, he had the fun bartender who's like half Cuban, half gay, you know, shaking it up, going, hey, I'll blow you, or whatever. That shake is sexy, isn't oh, it? Oh, I love they, a shake. They bring it over here, you get a little bicep going. Yes! It's really something. And he had a couple roll-ups on the sleeve, so it was a solid uh, egg wop mm. muffin right there on the mm, bike. I like that. And uh, he had a slick back hair and a pencil behind the ear. I mean, you could tell the guy gets, he's just pounding uh, fucking cougar gash all day. Well, he's probably from Idaho. A lot of people move Maybe. out to Hawaii. Like, I'm going to go bartend in Hawaii for a couple years years Why i went not? to high school with like 11 kids that just moved to honolulu really? for six months yeah that was a big thing 
couple of mass kids going across town. And they bartended and got laid and made all the money, and now they have friends. They go back and visit. It's pretty good. Yeah, why not? Why go to college? You can go to Hawaii. Exactly. You bartend, you get drunk, and you, you plow a fucking uh, milf. Anthony DeVito did that. He lived in a tree. He was like Is a homeless right? kid. Yeah, he lived in Hawaii. A tree? Yeah, they have all these people that just live in trees, like homeless. What? I'm telling you, Anthony DeVito lived in a coconut tree for like six months or what? something. <laughs> I swear to God. That's treason. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, had a great... Then we did the show that night. The show was killer, because I think they get so little comedy that they're like, ooh, baby, they're all juiced up. It's like seeing David Copperfield. They're they're riled up. They saw us on Rogan. They're Tuesdays. They came out. The guy had his son with him, a mom with a daughter. I yeah. mean, they're, the whole family comes. Bill Maher talks about that, because he does that New Year's show in Honolulu every year, which is like my dream gig. Oh, I tell my wow. agent, I'm like, get me in on that gig. Sure. But he said, he's like, I was the first guy to go there. Everyone's always said there's no market in Honolulu, oh, so nobody goes. Maybe we should go do a live Tuesday. We Tuesday's should do gig. a live Tuesday. They're out there, folks. They might shit the fucking blood for a month if they hurt us. <laughs> well, that's the cool thing. Hawaii's, uh, they're, they're uh, what's the word? It's I don't want to say primitive, but it's a little <laughs> more, uh, it's island people. Like These are like, I want to get drunk, get laid, and get sun. They're yeah. not worried about Twitter and woke and jizz and, and uh, Bernie and all that. They're just like, I'm living, man. And if you talk about Hispanics and gooks, I'm on board. <laughs> Yeah, they're 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 a simpler people. Sure, I'm talking about the locals and the visitors. Right, they got a Hawaiian shirt on and flip flops. Uh, they're not worried, and they got a weird tattoo and an earring. You know, these are fun loosey gooseys. Yeah, they're having a nice time. But I've also watched all the surf documentaries, and they got some. If you surf in the wrong place, oh, they'll yeah. beat you to death. But so, that's that's the primitive aspect. That's all. They're animals. Right. So they're like, yeah, it's nice. Come here, and we're all cool and hang loosey. Yeah. It's similar to Canadians. Where people always Canadians. talk about Canadians are friendly, they're nice, they're so soft, they don't do this, they're nice. And then you watch the fucking a hockey game, oh, and they're helps. just they're all punching each other in the face and slicing each other up with their hockey blades. That part I made up. Sure. But same with Hawaii. Like, it's hang loose, hang 10, fuck your mom, and right. then you surf on the wrong uh, break, <laughs> and they fucking shoot you. Yeah, 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 those undertoes. By the way, hey, who's Hang 10, fuck your mom. That's the new merch right there. <laughs> hang loose, hang 10, fuck your mom. Uh, he's well hung. But yeah, uh, just uh, but that's that's the balance. You get your goobly goo, nice guy, oh sorry, uh, maple syrup, mounty fuck face, and then you got your I'm going to beat your ass over an IPA in a hockey game, you fucking Blue Jay. <laughs> Whatever they are over there, the Canucks. Blue Jay, I think, is, is baseball. That's Toronto Blue Jays, ah. and then there's the Vancouver Canucks, which All I think right. is a slur. Blue Gay. Wait. Canuck. But yeah, it's their team. It's their team. We got the uh, the Brooklyn Hebes. <laughs> right? No? How's that not a team? I think they got sold. <laughs> they haggled? All right, all right. I'll, I'll keep it rolling here. Uh, next, I go out with the with the comics all night. We just pile one on. When you're in Hawaii, you're like, well, it's Magic Town. I won't get a hangover. Wake up. I want to kill myself. But here's the thing about trips. Anything that's a hassle, you should do. That's my little tip mm. to the traveling man or woman or tran is... You know, you wake up, you're hungover, you want to eat, you want to have a coffee, you want to jerk off, you want to take a boom boom. But you got to, and my friend has texted me, Andrew's going, let's get scooters, let's go jump cliffs, and let's get some food and, and live it up. And you go, ah, that sounds like a lot. You know, just getting out of bed as a bitch. You want me to go find a scooter place, rent it, give them my credit card. Fuck that. Then you got to get on a scooter, drive for 40 minutes. And then, but you go, wait. I'm in Hawaii. I'm not coming back here for 10 years. Let's fucking do it. And it sucked, but I was so glad I did it. But that's like the essence of, of travel. You're like the waking up in the morning, the cab to the fucking airport, ah, going through security, ah, boarding the plane, ah, trying to get your thing in the security, the person's fat elbow, the bad breath, the fucking the screens don't work, yep. all that bullshit, getting off the plane, getting ah, back in the cab, waiting for your luggage, checking ah, in the hotel. Ah, but once you are there, you put that fucking suitcase down, and you're just free in there. You're like, yeah, it was all worth it. All worth it. All Sing worth it. Sing it, sister. And we get to do it every week. Most people go on one vacation a fucking decade. Here, here. So good point. Blessed hashtag. Thank you. Me too. So we get the scooter. I'm hung over at the scooter place, and I'm like, ah, yeah, here, here. No insurance. No helmet. Uh, no hymen. I hate myself. Take the card. You know. And then you, you're. 
he had to drive me. He had a scooter already, so I had to get on his fat ass and get on the back, and then we go around the town, and the whole thing was a nightmare. We finally get the scooter. I chug some Kona coffee, which is some strong, primitive, native slave shit. I'm juiced up. We get out there, 40-minute scooter ride, me and this other guy, Zide, and uh, we're down there. We're, we're scooting. Sun is in my face, sunglasses on, flip-flops on. You got the wind going up your panties. Feeling good. The hangover's going away a little bit. Rainstorm. Ah, uh, every day. Talking monsoon, Katrina, Nashville, uh, fucking Sandy, you name it. Just whoosh, that those that rain that hurts. It like stings your forehead. Ah, uh, yep, yep. And I would take my sunglasses off, and then it was hitting you in the eye. So I'm just you're driving like this. I was like Dumb and Dumber, and uh, I had a big gulp, and I swallowed a June bug, and it was so bad that I see my friend Andrew, and he's like. He's doing this, like, pull over on the uh, highway. And we get off, and uh, we had to sit under, like, a, what do you call that? A canopy? Thank you! A canopy, and we just, like, let it go, blow over. And then you were like, all right, let's get back out there, because we don't want it to happen again. Let's just beat it, you know? And we just, and it hit us again, and we just said, fuck it. We just kept going, and it was, it was scary. Like, you're kind of wobbling. Trucks are whizzing by you. It was rough. Yeah, that's scary. But Especially we, you're only on two wheels. That's the thing yes. with a bike is if you fall, you're already you're outside of the car. If you fall, you're going to get scraped up and you're going to get run over. And it's wet. And I hate myself. And I'm gay. And my dad's fucked me. And the Bush women. Yes. And the indigent. So uh, we get to, the, we get to the, uh, the cliffs. Now this is where the whole masculinity sets in. You get to these cliffs. Just taking your shirt off feels weird. There's all these locals with tribal tattoos and buzz cuts and neck jizz and all this shit. And they got a fucking tooth in their ear and all this. You know, they, got a, they got a necklace full of eyeballs of people they killed and spears. And they're doing backflips and triple lindies off of these rocks. And you go, first of all, that's terrifying. I'm scared to even look over. And they're doing backwards bullshit. And they're all making fun of each other. And they're probably making fun of us. We don't even know. And, uh... You're like, how do I even get back up? This is just rock, right? You know, th this ain't uh, this ain't Dwayne Johnson. This is rock. This is just <laughs> fucking jagged, wet barnacle. <laughs> I saw the <laughs> saw the thumb. Barnacle. Uh, what do you infested sea urchin? They got these black spiky things That's on there. Scary to me. Yeah, it was crazy, and they're just jumping. And there's this one cute gal with them. Of course, she was a pretty hot lady. And now I'm fucked, because once there's a pretty girl around, I'm a, I'm a pile of jizz, and I can't think straight. And she's like, what are you guys doing? And, and she said the N-word a bunch. Really? Yeah. That's my kind of lady. I know. She was pretty hot. And so I was like, what's going on here? But they're just so tough. They're just such urchins and weirdos that they just they live like that, you know? And there's no black people there. But they're saying the N word and this and that, and uh, they say it like a like a rapper, like "What you doing?" You know, I don't want to say it, but you get it. So sure. eventually, I have to stand on the edge, and they're all staring at me. So I just jump. The whole thing was like eight feet, but it took forever. And my friend jumps, and now you're just getting brushed around in these crazy waves, and you're like, "All right, I'm gonna start climbing up." And the the ro the wave just slam you against the rock, and oh. it's just jagged and spiky, and you're like, "God!" I cut my leg up, and then you got to just pretend like it's not scary. You want to go. Oh, but they're all watching you, and they climb up like fucking roaches. Yeah, and then like your like little leg scrapes are burning the rest of the day. Yes, and you gotta try to pretend to listen, even though you're like yes. you just want to get in there and be like ah. Exactly, and just putting your bare foot, it stings, but you're like I gotta I gotta do it. You just push yourself up, then a, a wave hits, you have to cling to it like a bitch, and you finally get up the rock, and you're like, well, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, that sucked. I've had the exact same experience in Hawaii with Sarah, and you go to a thing, and it's like you jump off this, and it's a, a natural lake. Yes. And it was like kind of chilly because we were there in December, and I was like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. And then you start to have that thing of like, I'm in Hawaii. What am I doing? You want to have a story? Right. And then you're just wet for the rest of the day, and you're yes. bleeding. Yeah. You had the exact same experience. And you see all these travel videos of people jumping, and you don't think about the little parts, the climbing back up, the cold, the roaches, the, the N-word, the whole thing. It, it, all that part adds up. And then you also, I always have the image, because it happens, where you're like, soup, ah, and then your oh, fibula is broken in half. Same, same. And they got to bring a helicopter in, and then they're on the news. A fucking white asshole tries to do yes, the thing we do. Yes, the and, honky. Yeah, and they got, they got like two pieces of wood duct taped together yes. to make a cast. Yeah, it stinks. Greg tried to jump and be local and fucking ruined his toe, and now he's dead. Yeah, the whole thing stinks. So one guy just didn't even jump. 
And uh, we got up, and we're like, well, let's just go eat. It's all about eating. You just want to go eat, you know? Well, there's no better feeling. I think about this all the time, because you love the feeling of swimming in the ocean, getting an adventure. Yes. But the best feeling of the whole thing is when you're dried off, back dressed at the restaurant. Yes. You like to have that feeling of like, I went down the hill, winter sports, summer sports, whatever it is, you never feel better than when you're safe again. Right in the cabin after the skiing. You got a dry sock after a wet fart yeah and you're just comfy <laughs> at starbucks being like "Woo, back to normal right right yeah but i was glad i did it it was a nightmare and all that but i'm Always. glad i did it yeah Always. even the rainstorm and we we bonded you know all of the guys because we had the rainstorm we had the the rock we had the howlies and the whole thing and uh we left we went and saw some more rock stuff and the sun came out we scooted home and we did shows that night got drunk had a black, got drunk on the beach, which is so fun when it's dark on the beach. There's a couple of tiki torches, you know, because we're all right. And uh, <laughs> just, uh, just a great time. Went to bed, woke up, saw Pearl Harbor the next day, hungover. Great movie. Great movie. <laughs> ben Affleck, he was there. And uh, we took a little boat around. Saw live. Saw the whole thing. And I, uh, there's a little guy with a crew cut, like a big fucking man like from idaho talking on the on the mic uh, on the boat going this is uh the uss arizona it was sunk in 1941 and then he does the whole thing and he's like uh you know uh, he's all patriotic he's getting choked up and he goes any questions and i go you ever had an angry japanese guy on here like who was pissed about it because if we're upset they're upset too because they fucking kamikaze it and he was like we have had that and, uh, oh, really? and it got like a good murmur going. And I was like, hey, all right. And, you know, my friend was like, don't ask that. What are you crazy? That's going get, to get weird. But I was I was genuinely curious. You, there's got to be some proud Japanese kook who's like, ah, I'll do it again, you know? Right. And they're probably a little upset because we fucked them up pretty good after that. Yeah, we did. A couple of uh, atomics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They play a movie during it. And I saw, I look around, I saw a couple of uh, eyeball slants, you know? I was just like, this is. This is awkward. They're like these Japanese evil motherfuckers. We're going to kill them all. And they show this old footage of like people like, ah, I hate the Japs. And I'm like, that guy could be Japanese. I mean, he might be a Mongolian, but he's something. Yeah. Well. Just saying, it was awkward. He bought the ticket. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, buyer it, beware. It's like a 9-11 memorial. And they're like, ah, these fucking Muslims. And some guy was, you know, with a turban on. Like, hey, I'm just selling donuts. I don't know. Just saying. Cut out the slanty eyes. That was ah, too much. It's fun. I'm just saying, I fell for the... Uh, the Japanese. The nips, yeah. The zipper head. So I came home, and now I'm here. <laughs> hey, folks, are you looking for a natural deodorant? I know that making that change of deodorants can be hard. You don't want to try something that doesn't work, because then you'll stink. Literally. Even if it is all natural. Well, I've got a new sponsor to tell you about, folks. Native Deodorant. Native creates safe, simple, effective products and has over 8,000 five-star reviews. So you know it's the tops. Native Deodorant doesn't contain aluminum, parabens, or talc. woo You may have your doubts about switching to natural deodorant, but let me tell you, it works. I use it. The lady uses it. She puts it all over, and she smells like a big barrel of peaches. Big fan of the native, and uh, you can get yours now and see how it compares to your regular deodorant. There's no, there's no risk to try. Native is free shipping and free returns in the U.S. Yeah, I got some. They sent us. I appreciate everyone that sends us stuff, the uh, ad folks here. And uh, I use it, and Sarah uses it also. And Sarah has now, that's just her deodorant. She buys it every month or whatever, how long, long it takes her. And she's not going back. And uh, I'm enjoying it, too. And I like it. I smell fresh. smell yeah. good. I don't perspire. And it's a really great deodorant. And I highly recommend it to everybody listening. And for 20% off your first purchase, you can visit nativedeodorant.com and use the code TUESDAYS during checkout. That's oh, yeah. nativedeodorant.com and use code TUESDAYS, plural, during checkout. Native deodorant. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Here, here. There, there. What's the other one? Uh, I don't say away. No, no, it might just be native. I think it was just native. All right, we're back. So that was, uh, yeah. Get yourself some native deodorant, please. Please, you you stink. Pick it up. Uh, you can go. I've been hogging with Hawaii. -E. No, I I'm I'm all over the place because I got some new stuff that just happened. And then also, I got to go back to Arizona. I got more Arizona. But then I told some Arizona, so I'm trying to figure out what I told right. and what I didn't tell. The SS Arizona. 
But uh, this is a fun moment. So, Sarah, not Sarah, who's my other wife? Louie. Ah, yes, much uglier. Louie and I went to, we did Denver, then Phoenix, then Tucson. It was quite a trip. One wow. night in Denver, three nights in Phoenix, one night in Tucson. Aha. Uh-huh. Which is too long. Do you, I have Tucson. like, do you have a mental mind body yes. clock yes that by day five i'm like day five. i gotta go home i can't do it same with me same you need to get back to your nest yes i, I got a wife i got my smoothie that i make at home i go to some, some meetings some i like gym. my steam room yes. i like the gym you just like i like my bagel place i like my organic peanut butter that i smear all over that thing Ooh, smear I, I like my nice my shower just right my bed Nice to have things you like, though. Most people want to get away. This one guy wouldn't leave Hawaii. You want to come back. That's Thera- a good thing. I love my therapist. I miss him. Like, you're just like, I, I got to be home. Big Al. Like, yeah. day five, and it's like, there's something off. You just feel mentally a little like, something's up here. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. And you're living out of a case. You got a big bag of jizz with all kinds of panties and unmentionables and dildos. You want to come back to your own dildo. Murder was the case that they gave me. I, I got my away travel bag. Yep. Um, but anyways... Uh, so we were out there, and we get to the hotel in Phoenix. We stayed at a hotel called The Sanctuary. Mm. And Louie's like, this is about a half hour from the gig, but it's up on the mountain. It's like by Camelback Mountain, and it's like a, it's almost like a rehab place. Ooh. They got tennis courts everywhere, nice steam room, great rest. It's a, it's a rich people resort. You better believe it. And everyone's hot and ri- like the, the staff is sexy. The people are sexy. Wow, sexy staff. That's rare. And you get like a... Uh, like a bungalow, you oh, get like almost like a little plant. Like it was insane. Bung. bung me. So he's like, "This is a nice place. You go and you you kind of recharge your batteries a little bit." All right. So I go, "Great, perfect." So we get there, we play tennis. We had an epic game of tennis, and uh, we we're just <laughs> fucking around. We're playing. And he's like, "All right, let's start keeping score." And I'm, I have that thing. We're like, "You sure you want to keep yeah, score?" Yeah, you're 78 and a scandal. So I fucked him up on the tennis court, which was fun, and yeah, he's go. getting a little competitive, but uh, uh, he's old. Out of shape. Knocked him out. But every day you're steaming. It's like a great steam room. There's guys in there naked. One guy, what do you think about this? Mm. A guy full nude laying fully across one of the benches. It's like a it's what? like a three bench situation. Fully across, naked. Just full Come on. black bush, old wrinkled <laughs> cock. Just like this. And I thought I'm like, either one of those things is inappropriate. Yeah. Laying down is f- bullshit. And yeah. being fully naked is horseshit. Is he reading? I mean, what is he, a coffin? What is this? He's just laying down there. He's in Shavasana. Fucking Shavasana? Who's that? A that, black chick? That's a yoga pose. Oh, I didn't know that. Dead lady float or something. Oh, all right. So he's just sitting there like half asleep, and it's full steam, and you're like, what is this? And you can just see, like, it's so steamy. It's like a steam cloud. All you can see is the black bush. Oh, he's in the steam room. He's in the steam I room. I thought he was in the locker room. No, he's steaming. He's just sitting there. Oh, that's weird. So you just see this the grayish bush. cloud, but uh. like a black <laughs> cloudy smear, and you're like, those are pubes. I recognize them anywhere. Yeah, black bush is the, the worst pirate ever. <laughs> it's offensive. Yeah. But I'm like, you're taking up four seats, and you're nude. That is kooky banana. Has he got a towel down? No towel. Oh, ah, that's anal skin on the tile. It's double rude. One nude equals double rude. But, T-shirt. Uh, so we're just like, what the fuck? And then it was, it felt like we were in an episode of Impractical Jokers because this guy gets up and leaves. We're snickering because we're comic assholes. Sure. He gets up and leaves. The door closes, and then immediately the door opens, and a guy comes in full shave. He's got the shaving cream all over like what? Santa Claus, and he sits there and just shaves, and he's whistling. He's doing what? a whistle shave. This is the opposite of Blackbeard. We're looking at each other like, what the fuck is going on in here? It's Whitebeard. It feels like we're gonna be, like, gonna be like, ah, we're just kidding. We wanted to see if you guys would fucking right. fuck us. In the ass That's or whatever. A prank. But anyways, great time up there on. Wait, uh, what happened? Did he shave? I mean, he can't... shaved his whole face and then just left. What? This place is. This is with these rich cunts. They got all this entitlement. Yeah. I'm laying down, black bush. I'm shaving. Well, the next day I'm in there steaming, and I start. The guy starts chatting me up. Some guy. And he was like, yeah, if you tried the hot tub, it could be a little warmer, you know? And I go, I haven't been in there. I didn't bring a swim trunks. He goes, you don't need swim trunks, dude. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I was like, oh, I don't. He's like, you just go in there naked. He's like, it's it's a it's an exclusive club. So people are, but I'm like, a hot tub naked is strange to me. Strange. People are okay with nudity more than us. I think. I don't like to me. Your dick is offensive. Of I'm not course. homophobic. I'm not shy about my cock. But I mean, I'll take it out without people's permission as a joke. So will Louis. But I'm not just walking around naked like that. No, no, that's wacko. Strange. 
Kooky. But um, so we get to the hotel, and they have all the spring, Major League Baseball spring training is going on in Arizona, the Cactus League. Ah. It's all around there, and they play like every day. So I'm like, we got to go to a spring training game. I'm a big sports guy, obviously. Sure. So I looked up the schedule, and the Anaheim Angels uh, Stadium is like a 20-minute ride from the hotel. Okay. So I go, Sunday afternoon, let's go. And Louis says, great. I go, I'll, I'll get the tickets. Get a baby. Chip in. So I went in there, StubHub. I got row B next to the dugout. It's like you died and went to heaven. Woo-wee. We're right there. We couldn't get row A. There was no row A. Now, are you, are you primo on Stub? What do you I mean? Like you should be Delta Comfort on StubHub. I don't think they give you any points or anything. Oh, that's kooky. You got you should be all over that. Well, it's a it's a guy selling the tickets. Oh, it's so not a wanna, thing. It's a thing, but like, if you and I had tickets to a concert and all of a sudden oh, we got a gig, I see. We throw them on StubHub. So the guy's got to get paid. He's not going to give see. me a discount just because I, I have a problem. I, I thought it was a big skyscraper in Detroit typing. I mean, there's a skyscraper probably because it's a company, but yeah. also it's the guy's tickets. I don't they, know what goes on. Doing well. That's true. All right. I, I don't know much about Stub. Well, I get the Stub Hub. Maybe we should get them as a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to get something. You, can, you should be gold platinum. Good point. Well, I get the tickets, and uh, we go. We work out in the daytime. And Louie, he's a little, he moves on his own schedule a lot of the time. Uh-huh. So I'm starting to sweat it. I'm like, hey, we got we to gotta go here, but sure. hey, we're going to get there. We go out. We have a nice breakfast. And then the, the Phoenix, we're doing three shows, like a 2,000-seat theater. So... Friday, Saturday sold out. Sunday, a few tickets left, like okay. a handful, 40 tickets. Uh-huh. So we go out for breakfast. We're like Santa Claus. People keep recognizing me like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're here. Whoa. I wanted to go to your show. We go to a coffee shop. The lady, kind of sexy, she's like, I wanted to go to your show, but I'm working a double. And he's like, oh, man, I, well, if you can get it covered, I'll give you a ticket. She's like, I can't. Oh, my God, I'm such a huge fan. Wow. We take a photo, the whole thing. We go over to the, the breakfast place. We get breakfast, and there's this like super hot chick, black glasses. like me. She looked like me if I was attractive okay. and a woman. I can't even picture it. I don't have the c- mental capacity. Well, it's it's maybe not me. Bad example, right, but, right. but sexy lady. Tattoos, glasses. Ooh, very, very attractive. I like that. And she comes over, and she's like, I am fucking shitting my pants right now. <laughs> And we had already been, uh, Louis does the thing where I'm like, I was like, I'm like, look how hot this waitress is. She comes oh. over, she's like, I'm shitting my pants. And he's like, he was a fan of yours before you even came over here. And I'm like, what are you doing? Don't tell her that. Oh, that's cool. It was fun. I mean, if I was single, maybe it'd be something. But right. she does this, like uh, I'm acting it out. But you're, you're me, and then Louis here. I'm the woman. She went like this. Okay. You see that look? Uh, no. She went, she, this is Louis. She goes like this. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like it was like a half a second glance, just moved her head, looked at me, and was like, eh, didn't even <laughs> respond, which shows you what fame, because I'm an ugly fucking guy, but I mean, come on. Well, I got no picnic either. I got him beat, for yeah. God's sake. Oh, you got a head of hair, you're thin, yeah, you're younger. Yeah, fit. Right, right. Um, but anyways, but you know, he's a genius and all that sure, business. Sure, sure, legend. Um, so she's shitting her pants, and he goes, I'll tell you what, you want to go to the show? And she's like, what? I got to work. I'll get someone to cover my shift. He goes, you're going to have two tickets. What's your name? So I write down her name on the phone. Boop, boop, boop. Something Higgins. Yeah. And she goes, we got two tickets. She's like, oh, my gosh. She's like, can I give you a hug? She gives him a big hug, oh takes a photo. Oh, my God. We go back to the coffee shop. The lady's like, I got my shift. Can I still get what? a ticket? He goes, yeah, take her name down. So I'm like Santa. I'm, I'm texting all the tour managers, put down Susan for two. Whoa. Put down Betty for two. And then we go to, oh, I just thought of this. A guy reached out to me on Instagram, and he goes, hey, huge Tuesday. You're opening for Louie. I want to go to the show so bad. I wish I could go. And I turn to Lou. I go, hey, can I get two tickets? He goes, oh. of course. I message a Tuesday. I go, you got two tickets under your name for tonight. Whoa. Haven't heard from him. What? Never heard back. I just realized right now in this moment, this Tuesday chooch reaches out and says, boy, I wish I could go to the show. I get him on the list. I'm like, your name, you're on the list. He blew me then. He's like, I can't believe this. This is wow. insane. No word afterwards. Maybe he died. No, after the show. That was amazing. Did he, Thank he you did very go, much. though. I assume. I don't know. I don't know if he went. I think people get excited in the moment, and they go, when later, an hour later, they go, ah, I'm not going. I can't get a babysitter or whatever. Right, but right. I'll tell you, I, got him. I feel like he should have, you know. Send some kind of message. Yeah, jeez. Give us a Chipotle or an oob. Let me just tell you, folks, if someone gets you tickets to a show and you go, it's rude to not say, great show. Yes, or thank you, or something. Blinking again. Ah! Hey, Blinking. All right. Whoa, whoa, we're whoa, back. whoa. Yeah, we're recording. Oh, okay, okay. Hit pause and play. Got it, got it. Sorry, we're having all kinds of technical difficulties. Our cards are full. 
Fuck. And, uh, I'll do a video apology or something. Yeah, we lost the YouTube, but fuck YouTube. It's a podcast. I know, but people love it. They got 55 minutes. They're going to miss the last four minutes. Half all right. That's just plugging anyways. All right, all right, all right. Shit. So anyways, where the fuck were we, though? All right, so Louie, you got oh, the guy so we the give the I gave the guy the tickets, never heard back from him. Then we go to the spring training baseball game. We get mm. there right on time. We go down there. It's like it's like Costanza. You just keep walking. We're all the way down field level. We're at the same level as the field, uh-huh. row B, and we're seats one and two next to the dugout. So we're like in the dugout. Wow. It's so cool. I was hoping someone was going to recognize him and invite us in for like, you know, coffee. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have great seats. Great ball game. It's fun. We're just laughing it up. I just keep yelling, you know, sporting event and stuff. And Louie's like, this is a side of you I've never known. I'm like, I like to, because I like to heckle. I like to get involved with the team and stuff. I'm yelling in the dugout. and like, can you put me in? I I hit 321 in high school. And he's laughing. We're having a good time. We're kind of killing in the section. But you could tell some of the people were like, shut up. We come here every day. It's like Uh, old people, you know. Well, you got to push it. Fuck them. Well, we had a nice time. And then we go to get ice cream. Like, let's go get some ice creams. We're at the baseball game. We had hot dogs and ice creams. We're Jeez. having like it's like a father and son picnic. You're living, baby. Having a great time. So then we're sitting there eating our ice creams, and I see the fifty fifty lady walk by. Ah, she's going fifty fifty. Good looking lady. She's going fifty fifty. I go, hey, fifty fifty. Let's get some fifty fifty. How fun would it be to win the fifty fifty? Yeah. So she comes over. I go, hey, fifty fifty, and she turns and goes. Joe List? Come on! I go, yeah! And she's like, oh, man. She's like, I know you. I'm a huge comedy nerd. Oh, my Lord! She's like, I just listened to you on Honeydew. I'm like, this is so crazy. She's like, this is amazing. She's like, I'm like the biggest comedy nerd in the world. She might hear this. I love comedy. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. She's saying I'm a huge comedy nerd. And I got the funnest moment of my life. I get to do like... Uh, the head nod to her because Louie's wearing sunglasses and a hat. Right. So she's saying she's a comedy nerd. I'm standing next to the best comedian of all time. Oh, my God. And she's like, whoa, what the fuck? And uh, oh my she goes, God. I wanted to come to the show, but I work night. I'm like, a, I'm a comedy nerd who works nights. These doesn't make sense. People never stop working over there. Nobody can get off for a fucking night. Wow, well, this is America. Vote Bernie. So <laughs> Louie goes, so. you want to go to the show? I'll, I'll get you a couple tickets. So we get her a couple tickets. Oh, you're handing these out. You're, I, the, you're ticket master. I'm, t- I'm the ticket master. So it's exciting. We take her name down. And very beautiful woman, by the way. Arizona, the chock full. It's hard to not feel like... You know me. I know. You like me. Unreal. You're a good-looking woman that knows who I am. This it's is insane. Bananas. It's very exciting. And uh, what a time to be alive. So that was cool. We got the fifty-fifty. We didn't win, which is a bummer. But it's so cool to get recognized when I'm next to Louis. Yeah. Right. And then it happened again the next day. Some guy was like, "Joe List, huge fan," and he got nothing but Louis, which was nice. So Whoa. I don't know if he didn't recognize him or if he hates him. But uh, it right. feels good to start getting some recognition for God's sake. It's kind of a big dick move. You're like, "Hey, hey, sorry, Chooch. I'm the king." now yeah move over there pantyhose uh uh-huh. i don't know what that means uh, it's a good beatles song uh but anyways we should uh, wrap it up since we lost the video i don't want to <sighs> rob the people but there's more to come more to yeah. come from arizona and i got also I had the biggest night of my career we have to get into that next week but yeah. uh that was really something you were a part of it louis was oh, there the whole boy. thing we'll that's talk a, about that next that's a week tease but uh hell of a tease we got some big stuff coming up as you know this weekend i am at Comics Roadhouse in Mohegan Sun, Foxwoods, Connecticut. What the fuck it's called? Not Foxwoods. Mohegan Sun, Comics Roadhouse this weekend. Little uh, Big Dick Rogers is going to be there with me. Yeah. And then uh, next Monday, a week from yesterday, I guess, is uh, the Comedy Store, Belly Room. Come fill that up, for God's sake. Skank Fest, of course. Then Vegas, March 30th through April 3rd. I'll be there. I got to... Swing over to Boston on the 4th for one night. Then Melbourne Comedy Festival I'm going to. Shouldn't have said yes to that. The scheduling is ridiculous. <laughs> but remember, it's like Hawaii. Once you're there, you're in Australia. You're hugging a koala, getting chlamydia. It'll be a good time. Did I tell you this already? My flight leaves on April 5th. I land on April 7th. My birthday is April 6th. Yeah, you did. I got no birthday. You're in the air. Brutal. Cloud nine. Anyways, Worcester, woo ha ha, uh, April 17th and 18th. Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin, April 23rd through the 25th. Royal Oak, Michigan. I'll have a whole new act from Ann Arbor. It'll be all wow. new jokes. April 30th through May 2nd. So come back out to that. So many Tuesdays came to Ann Arbor. They had all seen you the week before. It was really uh, exciting. We do well in the mitten. Yeah, we do okay over there. And um, go check out Mindful Metal Jacket Podcast if you haven't already. Evidently, it's doing okay. That's what uh, Bobby told me, but he might be lying. Who knows? And uh, thanks for all the kind words. You can go check that out. And uh, go listen to Gary Veter's album. It's called Veter Las Vegas. Yes. I listened to it yesterday. It's great. 
It's great. We it's were there. It's really funny. Yeah. It's a good time. So go check out Veter's album. Killer jokes. And uh um, kid. Yeah. That's it for me. Oh yeah. Listen to Sam's uh special Veter's album. I think Renan's got an album. I think oh yeah. Louis Katz, maybe? Oh, Jim Two is everybody's got an album. A lot of, a lot of good time for comedy. Yeah. Uh this weekend I'm in Atlanta at the Laughing Skull. That's a tiny room, so uh get tickets quick. Bridgeport, Connecticut, Stress Factory. First time there. Let's try to sell that. I hear it's a big room. Vinny Brand's up my ass. He's the owner. Uh yeah, they were in Vegas. We're at Moon Tower. We're at Skanks in Houston. Uh then I'm in New Jersey Stress Factory, New Brunswick. Uh, Brea Improv. This was just added. Doing Conan. Gonna run over and do Brea. Wherever the hell Brea is. It's in California. I've done that room with Sal. Oh, nice. It's a cool little town. Huge room. Is it just a, a burb? Yeah, it's like a nice burb. Okay. Well, I'll be a blurb and a burb. And uh, then beginning of Ramadan. Then I'm in Des Moines in Iowa at the Funny Bone. Uh, Zanies in Chicago, Laugh Stop in Calgary. Never been to Calgary. I don't even know what that is. Tempe. We're just talking about Arizona for her. Uh, uh, comedy. Good nights. Good nights in Raleigh. I love that room. Philly. You know Philly. And uh, London. Going to be in London at the Soho Theater for a full week in June. No, July. Sorry, July 10th. And Doctor Grins back in Michigan. And uh, what is that? Miami, Florida. So a lot of fun stuff on the books. Tell your dad, blow your brother, eat out your mom, kill a kid, suck your own asshole, and we'll see you in hell. Bye. Praise Allah.